Hello, welcome to this next tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to create a kind of a ring mail um, which we can use in Substance Painter. So, if I go to File and New to start with, and then pick a substance graph, I want metallic roughness, and let's give it a name of uh, ring mail. And everything else should be fine. So, uh, size mode is relative, uh, 2048 by 2048 format is relative and these are all our channels so we'll click OK. Okay so let me move that over to the side. Um, so what we need to do or what we start out with as always is a shape. So I'm going to click into my graph and press space and type in uh, shape and that will bring us up the shape node. And then in the properties change the pattern to be a disc so now we have a disc uh, but there's no option for a ring so we need to create one uh, so I need to cut out the middle of this um, this disc here and we'll do that with uh, two nodes a transform and a blend so let's transform first so with this shape selected if I press space and type in trans I can pick transform 2d I'm just gonna put that up there and then in the um, stretch parameters I'm going to bring that down to say 75% I might adjust this in a moment but uh, we'll start with 75 so you'll notice that nothing actually happens here when I do that it's just because I need to apply these two to make that work and then we've got like a repeated tile pattern around this which I don't want uh, what I actually want it to do is you know just be a circle in the middle so we can change that under the base parameters and go to tiling mode and change the method to absolute and then uh, use the drop down and pick no tiling so now we've just got our ring in the middle okay so a blend node now so it's spacebar blend and I plug my uh, hole in the top and my disk in the bottom and then we change the mode to, from copy to subtract and now we have a ring which is perfect it's exactly what we want okay so in the next uh, video what we're going to do is um, add the bindings to this so there'll be a little binding around sort of each point uh, north south east and west um, so we need to you know get that done so i'll uh, talk to you in the next bit Okay, so now I want a, uh, a basically a little square piece or a little maybe a, like a pill shaped piece down the bottom on the left, on the top, and on the right. Uh, so let's create a new shape. So space and shape. And on this shape, we're going to uh, leave it at the square, uh, but we're going to change our scale down. So I'm going to bring the scale right down and then we can stretch it either way. So sorry my brain <laughs> it just went. <laughs> um, on the sizes you, you'll notice that uh, you know I'm kind of limited um, in my numbers here but I want actually this to be higher so if I actually just type into it increases our maximum so we can do you know pretty much what we want to okay so now I've got a top to bottom bind uh, but I need a left to right bind as well so I'm gonna select this shape I press space and transform uh, this time I'm gonna use the safe, safe transform and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees Ah, that's the offset <laughs> so on the rotation I need to rotate this 90 degrees there we go so now I have a, a piece that I could put at the top and a piece that I can put at the bottom uh, but I still need to offset them a little bit uh, so if I select this can I offset it here no I can't I need a transform okay so 
space and trans so I transform 2d and for one side I want half of this to be at the top and half of it to be at the bottom so if I change my offset to 0 0.5 you'll see that's exactly what we get let me make this a little bigger so we can come out so yes I've got a white bit at the top and a white bit at the bottom and that's perfect and similarly for this one but I can offset this as I rotate it uh, so actually this will be Y as well because I rotated it so I'll just put 0 0.5 again there we go so that's terrific uh, except I need these two shapes to be joined so once again we do a blend pop those in there and I think we should set this to add there we go so now I've got my bindings which will bind our ring together so I can bring this down here and space and blend and now I should be able to merge these together so initially it's not going to show anything uh, but if I set this to say max lighten it should join them together so that's great but my bindings look a bit off so I just need to go back to my shape and adjust it a bit so my X I think is too wide there we go and I think my Y is too long I just want to take that back so it's less of a you know less of a harsh ring okay so that's all very well we have a basic shape um, but we need to make sure that our ring is underneath our um, binders so we'll have a go at that in the next one so i'll talk to you then okay so for this to sit properly uh, i need this white on the ring to be gray i need it to be uh, gray which is below white in terms of depth so if i select this noodle here that's what they're called and press space and type in levels I can click in there and it will give me a levels node and the levels node will just allow me to adjust the Y output here and if I take it down to somewhere around half and then double click on our uh, blended shape here you'll see that it's now uh, way below uh, the the Y of the binders which is great uh, another thing I've just noticed is uh, I would really like this ring not to touch the edge it's too close for me I'd like to bring it in just a little bit so either after the blender after the levels we can add in a transform and just make this ring a little bit smaller so let's make it perhaps 95% let's try 95 95 and then of course apply width and apply height and then we need to change our tiling mode to absolute and no tiling and now we should have like a clear distance between the binding and the uh, the ring you can adjust that as you want you know however however looks good to you essentially okay so one last thing with the shape uh, and that is that i want the shape to fall off as it goes beyond the ring so we need to uh, apply a gradient which we're going to do next okay so we want to put a little bit of a gradient around the inside here so what we do is add in a gradient uh, a radial gradient so press space and type in a grade or grady however you want to take it uh, and I'm going to pick this radial here now this is too small so I need to just extend it out a bit and if I grab this little grey bit here I can expand it out and I don't care if it doesn't reach the corners I just want it to be um, you know covering these um, points of the you know the compass so for that then we need to blend that with our cross so space 
and blend. And now if I put my gradient into the top and my uh, cross into the bottom, I can change the um, mode to um, multiply. Uh, but actually this is the wrong way around. You see I've got dark and then light. I need it the other way around. So I'll select this noodle, press space and type in invert. And then that should work. Yeah, now we've got the darker uh, shades on the inside and the lighter on the outside. And now I just replace that in the uh, final blend. And now we've got our rings uh, going over and intersecting with our uh, actual ring there. Okay, so we've created the shape and it looks pretty good. Uh, but what we actually need to do is tile it. Um, and the easy way to tile uh, well actually let me show you two ways and uh, because I'm going to show you two ways I'm going to do it in the next section um, and I'm going to show you why I don't use one particular way for this kind of thing so talk to you then right so uh, there are multiple ways of tiling in uh, substance designer um, one way is to use a tiling node. So if we press space and type in tile, uh, we've got the tile generator, we've got some random tiles and we've got some color ones. Uh, if I pick the tile generator, which is quite commonly used, I can plug my shape here into pattern one input. And then over on the generator, I can change the pattern to input. And if I zoom in, you'll notice there's a teeny tiny black line between them. And I've tried all manner of chicanery to make that go away, uh, but I haven't been able to. Which is slightly annoying, uh, but in this case there is a solution. And that's to use a simple transform node. So if I go to transform, uh, well let's use safe transform. and pop that in there uh, we still have uh, or we have a tiling option so if I start to increase that you'll see I get my tiles and this time I don't have that horrible dark line between the two pieces if I double click there so we have our dark line and if I double click here we have a nice unbroken line so that's why I don't use the toll generator in this case because I've put a lot of time into trying to make it work and I have not been able to um, and I get similar issues with the toll sampler okay so that's tiling so we have a nice tiled texture here uh, as I say we can increase our tiling density obviously we've only got 2048 by 2048 here to work with so we might need to be careful about um, just how many tiles we do okay so with that said uh, we can now start plugging this into our outputs and have a look see what it looks like on the model which we'll do in the next section okay so first of all uh, I'm going to plug this into our normal channel and if I double click on that you should see it's generating some lovely normal information and I can also plug it into the height channel so if I delete that little grey node out there and pop that one in instead we now have a height channel and we can start to see what it looks like so it might look a bit rough to start with I think this is down to the tiling at the moment uh, so if I go to my tile generator going to take my tiles down a little there we go and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually adjust my material settings so if we go to materials default and edit uh, we get our height parameters and tessellation options so I'm going to increase the tessellation factor and that basically adds more geometry underneath which is what you know displacement needs to actually work uh, in a nice way and I can also change the height scale if I want just to see you know how far it's going 
So that's the height and the normal channel. Uh, I can also use this for uh, metal and roughness. So let me just step this back a little bit because I'm going to add a little bit in between. So first of all, I've clicked into the graph and I'm just press space. I'm going to type levels and I'm going to drag and drop that into there. And now I'm going to take this uh, map and we're going to crush down the white. No, wrong way. I'm going to move up the black. No, <laughs> I'm at the wrong, wrong end of the graph. There we go. So now it's going to define anything that's white as metal and anything that's black as not. And if I plug that into the metallic channel, we should see an immediate change. And we do, which is terrific. Uh, similarly, we can plug that into the roughness as well. And that's given it max roughness. Uh, we don't want max roughness necessarily. So what I'm going to do is pop a levels between those two as well. So I've selected the noodle, press space and type in level. And now I'm going to go the other way. Let's, let's delete that, shall we? Sorry, I need to do the uh, other side, the output end. So I want it to be grey, closer to black, because the closer to black it is, the less rough it is. There we go. Okay, so that's our basic pattern. Um, and next we'll deal with a bit of uh, perhaps colour, and I'm going to put an opacity channel into this so that we can overlay it on other materials. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's deal with the opacity first. Um, for that, I'm just going to delete this ambient occlusion uh, area and then uh, press space and type in output. And then we'll label this and call it uh, opacity. If I can type, no, I can't. O P A C I T. Right, there we go. Let's just copy that. I'll pop it on the label as well. And then uh, under the usage, I'm going to add an item and we're going to change this to opacity. There we go. So we need to tell Substance to use this in this 3D viewport. So I'm going to right click and view in 3D and then in the list we'll select opacity. And you'll see it disappears immediately because it's all white. And now if I plug that in, we should get a good look. So uh, I'm going to change this uh, scene prop to a high res plane and then I think I'll turn the environment off so I can see it properly. Uh, so it's environment and edit and then is visible. We'll set that to false. So there we go. That's what our ring mail looks like. OK, so it's a little bit um, chunky, uh, but it's OK. And uh, I think we need to add some colour and we also need to add perhaps a little bit of refinement to the shape. So uh, we'll do put the colour in next and uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. OK, so I want to bring uh, these ties up, uh, which probably means the easiest thing to do is take the uh, rings down a little bit. So I'm going to pick on my levels um, area and I'm going to take this white balance or white level down a little bit. And you should see that separating out a bit now so that it actually looks like it's not just kind of sitting on there. That's good. OK, so I'm going to use this for our colour or this rather. Um, so let's take that up and pop it straight in there and see what it looks like. Uh, not much change really, except uh, there is some degree of, um, you know, variation across the, the whole thing. Uh, we could add some dirt into this. So let's uh, find a nice little node. So let's press space and type in noise and we'll get a whole bunch of noises. And uh, I want a white noise. Where's white noise? It's down there somewhere. Uh, white noise. There we go. 
so I just want a grain essentially uh, so let's press space and type in a blend pop those in there plug these in together and then we'll change our mode to multiply there we go so now it's doing it um, but it's a little bit too much and what we can do is adjust our blend here so if I take the blend right down you'll see that it becomes you know softer and softer and softer until you get to a level that you're going to be pretty happy with I imagine and actually that might be nice for the height um, but yeah let's not make things too complicated let's pop that over there see what it looks like there we go so now we've got a bit of uh, a bit of summit to our metal it's not just a single color let's take this one away this placeholder a plug-in so we have quite a lot um, yeah yeah I think one thing I might add um, is a bit of a a blend uh, with a blur for the normal and the height so let me press space and blend whoops not blabbed blend there we go and then I want a, a blur node so space and blur and in this case I want the high quality blur where has that gone oh blur hq cone where's the grayscale blur what's going on space blur there we are that happened because i had this selected and when you have someone selected it tries to pick nodes that are appropriate to it and that wanted the color input but we're going to give it a, a grayscale so if i take this blur down into here you'll see it massively blurs out uh, we'll put the quality to one uh, there is no midpoint here it's either on or it's off and then we'll take the intensity right down we just want it to be a little bit of a blur there we go just to soften it up a little bit and oh, why, why did I put a blend in I don't need a blend sorry that's my brain going so I'm going to plug that up into the normal now we've got a slightly fuzzier normal and I'll plug that into the height and now we get a softer height it's less kind of rigid and sharp at the ends okay so we've made a ring mail um, so all that's left to do is get this out of here and use it in substance so I will talk to you then substance painter that is okay so we have an unnecessary node here so let's just take that out and uh, just know if you want this uh these rings to be um slightly yeah older or newer then you just need to adjust your roughness levels here um and you could of course add in more noise and more all sorts of things but you know i just wanted to get us going on this so now we need to save the package so I'm going to right click on the package and save as and I'll call it my ring mail just put it in my project directory there and now in the ring mail uh, the actual package itself um, we don't need to do anything I don't know what I'm doing uh, so just right click on the ring mail SBS and publish SBS AR file and uh, this is going into my textures directory that's fine change the directory if you wish I want to generate the missing icon and this is going to go away and uh, create me a nice icon uh, the previous versions of substance didn't have that so that's good and then I'm going to hit publish and that is pretty much that now all we need to do is go into substance painter and have a look at it and use it and see what we can do so I will talk to you in the next section. Okay, so um, I've in Substance Painter now, and I'm just going to open up one of the sample files, which is the tiling material, and I'm going to delete all of these layers, and I'm just going to switch out the shader, 
uh, it's on an ASM metallic rough uh, I want that to be uh, this PBR uh, uh, metal rough with alpha and then uh, we'll just adjust our tessellation settings here and bring our height down a little bit somewhere around there we might adjust that in a minute okay so to import our uh, nice new uh, material uh, just grab your uh, SBSAR file onto your shelf and then uh, I'm going to import this into the project and no other changes required so just hit import and you'll see it appears in your library down the bottom here which is perfect so now I can drag and drop that onto uh, my layer stack here and you'll see that uh, my height is a little bit mad still so let's deal with that so back to the shader and it should be say 0 0.002 or even one we're usually dealing in really small numbers here <laughs> there we go somewhere along those lines now you'll notice that uh, I have a background still and I asked it to use opacity um, or I got it to export opacity and that is likely because in my shader settings uh, I don't have an opacity channel so I just need to add it so in the channels area I hit plus and then select opacity from the list and now it's transparent completely there we go so we have a nice transparent ring mail which we can use uh, as we want uh, but we don't always need it to be transparent so what I'm going to do is on the layers uh, I'm going to turn off the opacity and what I want is to have like a leather underneath this so I'm going to find uh, something else let's uh, pick a leather out uh, leather what's that leather big grain leather rough that sounds better yeah let's drag that under there and of course I can't see through it even though uh, I've got an opacity channel but that's okay we just need to add a black mask so on the ring mail layer I'll add a black mask and underneath that I'll add a fill layer um, if I select on the texture now I can right click and add an anchor point which allows me to reference all of those levels so ring mail fill and if I click on the uniform color here I can go to anchor points and pick my ring mail and it defaults to the base color which isn't perfect for this uh, but we happen to know that our metallic is really good so there we have it we've got our metallic layer in and that's all good so now we have some nice ring mail uh, over or included in um, some leather but the leather seems to be on top at the moment and that's probably going to be an adjustment to the levels of this so I'm just going to change my view to height and we can see what the height looks like and it's all pretty bad so click on the layer on the uh, actual material layer right click and add levels and then change the affected channel to height and then we can adjust that until our rings come out and now if I go back to the material layer they should be sitting on top of the leather below so that's great now you have uh, a pretty nice ring mail that you can use over and over again ad infinitum um, so yeah I hope you found that useful um, obviously you can use this process for many many different things I just picked ring mail as, uh, as, a, as a starter but you know you can make all sorts of tiled and repeating patterns using that method within Substance Designer so if you have any questions put them in the comments below um, if you learned something hit like uh, subscribe you know <laughs> whatever you want to do to show anyway uh, I will talk to you in another video